Hi, this is a tutorial on how to make how to restrict the size of your time machine backup on your time capsule. So if you would like to use your time capsule as a network of storage or just an external drive, the backup won't exceed a certain set amount of space that you give it. And that's it. So I've seen a countless number of tutorials online and none of them quite address this issue. And I found some complex commands that you could run in terminal, but most of them didn't even work by resizing by the means of resizing the sparse bundle, the existing sparse bundle size. And I just found a better way to create your own sparse bundle and transfer certain files which will kind of fool the time machine and make it work for you. So let me show you. First you have to go into the time machine preferences and select the disk. Well it's the disk on your time capsule that you want to use. Mine is empty and I recommend that you delete the existing sparse bundle file if you already had backups and because it's just much easier, faster and reliable if you do it, I mean fresh up. So my disk appears twice because first one is local and the second one is over the iCloud back to my Mac feature. So I select this one, there's the password. And it should start making the first backup. I'll just speed it up by clicking backup now. <clears throat> Once it stops preparing and it starts actually transferring files you can, well, you can tell that by going to, into your time capsule, opening up the drive, and there you can see the sparse bundle image already, and it's, as you can see, it's temporary. So once this TMP extension disappears, you can stop the backup. So let's just wait for that. I'll stop it over here using the, the drop-down menu from the menu bar. And now it's calculating size, and it should start I mean, it's already removed the temporary feed extension, so I'll just yeah, I'll just stop it now. That's enough. It shouldn't take long now that it started doing it properly. I'll turn off the time machine so it doesn't back up anymore. And what you want to do now is show the contents, show package contents of this sparse bundle that has the name of your computer, and you want to copy these two files com.apple.timemachine.machineid just put them on a desktop or whatever and now you can delete this sparse bundle that you have here but first remember the name it's essentially the name of your computer so I'll just copy that and then I'll delete it yep I'll close this for now now open disk utility it's in your utilities. And you want to click new image. Save as the name of your computer. Uh, image format is sparse bundle. The disk name, I mean the name of the image, the virtual drive should be time machine backups. It's, the format should be macOS extended, case sensitive, this is very important, journaled. Uh, no encryption, I've seen some users do encryption, but it doesn't make any sense because the way time, time machine encryption works is it encrypts the inter, entire drive. And if you do this, well, if you try to restore from the Lions recovery drive, it might not support it. So I wouldn't do that personally. Partition, single partition yet, sparse model already had it, and the size, this is the most important part. It's entirely up to you what size you choose. I'm using currently 75 gigabytes of my 128, 128 SSD drive, so I'm gonna go with, um, let's say 200 gigabytes. I have a 2 terabyte time capsule, so that should be enough space left, even if I back up other Macs.
And I hope you understand if you want multiple back Macs backing up and limit all of their sizes, you have to repeat this process for each of them. So I have the name, I want to save it. Let's save it on the desktop first. Or somewhere where you can work with it, but I already have these files here, so I'll just save it there. Okay. Make sure your settings match mine, except the size that's up to you. And the name. And I'll click Create. Create. <clears throat> okay, so it mounted it over here and you can see that it has 200 gigabytes the image I'll eject it now remove it from my disk utility and quit disk utility now where is it here I'll open the package contents show package contents by right clicking and I'll copy these two files I have from the previous backup into this this one which is essentially the same uh, I'll eject it. No, I don't have to eject it. I'll just close the window. Open up my time capsule partition and copy this sparse bundle image there. It doesn't have much. It's only 380 megabytes. The good thing about it is that these sparse bundle uh, virtual images they stay a small size until you fill them up. And what we just did is prevent it from exceeding the, in my case, 200 gigabytes. I tried this before, and when you reach when it reaches the end, it just deletes all backups. It doesn't go any further. So now you can close this. You go back to your time machine preferences. You don't change anything about this disk. It has to stay the same. So that's how we're going to fool it now. I'll just select the option to backup now. And what's going to happen is it's going to notice that something has changed and there's going to be a window yes this one you just select use the disk anyway and now when i open the partition i can see my sparse bundle file here that i just created and you can see that it's starting to back up and it didn't create a new one so it's using yours and also here is the icon of this partition that is using for time machine backups and you can see 200 gigabytes instead of 2 terabytes that would be there if you use the default settings and you can still see the 2 terabytes here but it doesn't really matter it doesn't use anything it doesn't restrict the expansion of that file or anything so yep that's it basically you're welcome bye